Hello, I'm Jeremy Thompson, Managing Director of Mazda UK, and I'm delighted to share some exciting insights and updates on progress that we're making towards a more sustainable future for the manufacture and usage of cars across the Mazda range. Mazda has always been a strong innovator despite our modest scale, pursuing technologies that other manufacturers have decided were too difficult to make work. The rotary and Miller cycle engines are two examples of that thinking that created cars that were great to drive and technically different. This belief in developing technology that others had dismissed as impossible led Mazda to develop the spark-controlled compression ignition engine, Skyactiv-X. A technology that was considered too difficult to develop for commercial use, but offers class-leading economy and emissions that are now to be found in our Mazda 3 and CX-30 cars. At Mazda, we take on the challenge to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 in all areas including product, technology, manufacturing and sales. The Skyactiv X engine is an important part of our powertrain strategy. While electric cars are a very important part of reducing CO2, we still need internal combustion engines to power the vast majority of cars on the road today and in the coming years. The only way to ensure a low CO2 future is to improve the efficiency of these engines and to continue to develop them alongside greater electrification, hybrids, plug-in hybrids and battery electric vehicles. In 2030, the legacy fleet, those cars sold prior to 2030 but still in use, will still be dominated by internal combustion cars and how we develop them now will determine our CO2 footprint into the future. Renewable fuels can have a positive impact on the CO2 emissions of the current car fleet and significantly improve the performance of these vehicles. Most of our cars today already have mild hybrid engines. We're about to launch our first battery electric vehicle, the MX-30, and we'll launch a plug-in hybrid in the future. But a singular focus on one technology will not bring about the low CO2 future that the planet needs. We have to take a multi-solution approach to maximise CO2 reduction and in order to achieve this we must continue to develop the internal combustion engine to harness the benefits of more efficient combustion and ever greater levels of electrification. In combination, this has to make sense until the world is able to pivot to a carbon neutral power generation, manufacturing and transportation solutions. I'm Jamie Turner, I'm a Professor of Engines and Energy Systems at the University of Bath. It's important to continue to develop the internal combustion engine because it is inherently affordable technology. It will likely continue to move most of the world around for several decades to come. If we stop developing it, then we rule out potential improvements which could help the planet uh, very significantly as we moved to try uh, and electrify the transport fleet. The problem that we face is not an engine-based problem, it's a fuel problem. The problem is that we operate engines on fossil fuels. So really what we need to be looking at is to eliminate the use of fossil fuel. So what governments ought to be saying is by such and such a time we're going to ban the sale of fossil fuel. That would allow other alternatives to come in, some more biofuel perhaps, but also these uh, new e-fuels, electrofuels, so synthetic fuels which are made from CO2 that's already been released into the atmosphere and uh, hydrogen from water synthesised to make an energy carrier which can be used in everything that's out there now. Those e-fuels are every bit as potentially carbon neutral as uh, electrification could give us. The real point about e-fuels is it allows us to keep engines which are affordable and the economic model around that but at the same time, it allows all the existing cars that we've got to be decarbonised. So e-fuels are really the reason why it's very important to continue to develop the internal combustion engine. If we make the engine more efficient, we have to synthesise less e-fuel. So there's still a relationship between the two. I certainly believe we'll have internal combustion engines uh, in certain areas of uh, transportation well into the future. 